Formulas are really essential to harnessing the distinctive capabilities of Notion. But for many users, they're also the most daunting part of learning Notion. So in this primer, I'm going to give you a really good understanding of the fundamentals of Notion formulas. And then in other tutorials, I'll dive into specific functions and how to use formulas in database automation. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube and to the Notion VIP newsletter. And throughout this one, I'm going to use two databases to demonstrate each concept. We'll have a database of e-commerce orders and then a related database of customers. And for you to reference as you practice these concepts, they're available as templates to members of Notion A to Z, along with all other Notion VIP templates and resources for getting the most from Notion. So you know my number one rule for Notion is to structure all information in related master databases and then access it through contextually filtered views. That's the crux of my bulletproof framework and among the endless benefits is that you can leverage formulas within properties and in automations. So why use formulas? They can perform calculations on other properties like finding the total price or the return deadline of e-commerce orders. They can merge text, such as generating personalized emails from a template with each person's first name. They can perform different actions based on the conditions of other properties, like assigning a priority to customers based on their lifetime value. And formulas can filter relation properties based on other properties of the related items. We might want a property that contains only subscription orders, for example. And that allows formulas to function as advanced roll-up properties. With that filtered list of subscription orders, you could total just the recurring revenue from each customer. And formulas can do all of this within automations to generate values dynamically for the properties they populate. It's a best practice to have a unique value for every title property, so I love using a formula to generate the titles by combining other properties and sometimes using a timestamp. So within Notion databases, you can use formulas in two places, as a property of the database and within the database's automations. And for this primer, we're gonna focus on the formula property because that's where they're used most commonly. And if you can use formulas there, you can easily use them within automations as well. And like I said, I'll have tutorials dedicated specifically to using formulas within automations. So when you add a property to a database, you can choose the formula type. And a formula is essentially an operation performed on input values to return an output value. And like every other property type, a formula ultimately contains a single value for each item in the database. So each time you load the database, it executes the formula for each item to determine its value. And when you configure the formula property, you write the formula using Notion's formula language, which is now in version 2.0. It's sort of a template with placeholders where you want to reference other properties as inputs. And then when it executes for each database item, it uses that item's property values. You can write the formula from the main property configuration menu or simply by clicking into any cell of the property. And that brings up the formula editor. You compose the formula at the top and at the bottom left is a list of features you can use in the formula, like the properties you can reference and functions, which we'll talk about in just a second. And when you hover above an item, it displays helpful information to the right, and you can click it to add it to your formula. So if I type the simple formula 2 plus 2, I can save, and we get 4 for each item in the database because we didn't reference any other properties. The inputs for every item are 2 and 2. So formulas have two core components, input values and the operations to perform on those values. But before we dive into inputs and operations, let's talk about value types. Every input and output value is a particular type of data. And the types you'll use most often are numbers, strings, which are text, dates, booleans, which are true or false, and often represented by a checkbox, the related items within relation properties, and lists, which are technically known as arrays and can include related items or multi-select options, which are text strings. And it's important to stay mindful of value types because the operations you perform on your inputs require certain types. And your options for formatting and reusing your output value depend on its type as well. So I'll mention value types often as we unpack formulas and in the other tutorials that cover specific functions and automations. So your inputs can be static like the twos in our 2 plus 2 formula where they're always the same for each iteration of the formula. 
And when you use static text, like if we combine my dog and is Whaley, we surround it with double quotes. But what makes formulas so useful is that we can use other properties as inputs. So when the formula runs for each item, it uses the item's independent property values. So to total our e-commerce orders, we choose the subtotal property, then type a plus sign, then tax plus shipping. And this works because all of these input values are the number type. But you might have noticed that the tax property is another formula. It takes the subtotal property and multiplies it by the static value 0.07 or 7% to return a number. And we can also type property references directly into the formula editor. Start with the keyword prop, and then in parentheses, include the name of the property you want to reference within double quotes. So those are static and dynamic input values. Let's talk about the actions we perform on them. When we added numbers to calculate the order total, we used plus signs. To calculate tax, we multiplied with the asterisk. Those plus signs and asterisk were arithmetic operators, which are the symbols you're familiar with for mathematical calculations. We also have the dash for subtraction and the forward slash for division. And you may have noticed that we also use the plus sign to combine my dog and is Whaley. When it's used to merge or concatenate text values, the plus sign is known as the concatenation operator. So arithmetic operators return numbers and the concatenation operator returns text. We also have Boolean operators that compare values to return true or false. To compare two and three, we use greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, a double equal sign to see if they're equal, or an exclamation point and an equal sign to see if they're unequal. And then we have logical operators used with true and false values. A double ampersand represents and, and a double vertical pipe represents or. So and returns true if both values are true or returns true if either one of the values is true. But instead of using true and false explicitly, you'll typically use logical operators with inner expressions that return a Boolean. So an expression is sort of a formula within a formula or a nested formula that returns a value used by the outer formula. So we can replace this true with the comparison in parentheses. That evaluates to true, which is then used by the outer formula. And you'll see why returning true or false is so useful when I cover the really profoundly useful if function, which returns a value based on conditions. And you'll find a full list of arithmetic, comparison, and logical operators in the formula cheat sheet on Notion VIP. So operators are one way of specifying the operations to perform on your input values. Functions are another way. They're like packaged actions that begin with a keyword, and then within parentheses, you provide your inputs, which are called the function's arguments. So with the add function, we can replace our 2 plus 2 by providing it two twos separated by a comma. And Notion offers many functions for every data type. And you'll find them all within the left column of the formula editor. When you hover over one, you'll see a description of what it does and the arguments it accepts. And like I said, I'll cover many functions in dedicated tutorials, but two of the simpler ones I use often are date add and date subtract. So if we search for date add, we can see it adds time to a date. The first argument is the date, which will typically be a reference to a date property. The second argument is the quantity to add. And then the third is the unit for that quantity, lowercase and in quotes. So let's say these orders can be returned within 30 days of the order. We can calculate the return deadline by supplying date add with the order date, the number 30, and the text string days. And then lastly for this primer, I want to show you how you can create a chain of functions using what's called dot notation. Remember, each function returns a single output value. In the case of our return deadline, it's a date. So if we attach to that function a period and another function, the output of the first function becomes the first argument of the next function. So date subtract takes the same three arguments as date add, it just subtracts the quantity instead of adding it. So if we add dot and date subtract, the first argument is already covered by the date resulting from the preceding date add function. So we just need the second two arguments. I'll use 30 and days again, which will take us back to our order date. 
So with this dot notation, you can create long and intricate function chains that are easy to write, comprehend, and update. And with that, you're well primed to start leveraging formulas within Notion databases. And like I said, for your reference, as you practice these concepts, the databases of e-commerce orders and customers are available to members of Notion A to Z. And once you've mastered the fundamentals, keep an eye out for my tutorials dedicated to specific functions, including the if function, and using formulas in Notion automations. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and to the Notion VIP newsletter so you don't miss them. And if you're not yet a member of Notion A to Z, consider joining us for full access to all Notion VIP templates and resources so you can get the most from Notion.